Volo has been long known for producing station wagons, and yet we don't see very many on the road these days. Volvo still produces some of the best, most luxurious wagons that you'll see. In this V60 cross country, you can see the sporty design. It is absolutely a beautiful wagon. The other thing is, look at the ground clearance. There's 8.3 inches of ground clearance, which means you can do some mild off-roading, which they have taken this to an off-roading course, and it did quite well. The other thing is, look at the sheer size of this. That means you've got tons of room on the inside. And for 2003, they made some changes to the front grille, to the rear bumper, and gave you these new 20-inch wheels. Those are awesome. Those are one of my favorite wheels that I've seen on a car yet. Way to go, Volvo. But the biggest changes that they made were under the hood. So let's go talk about that. This V60 Cross Country is now powered by a 2.0 liter turbocharged four cylinder, along with a 13 horsepower, 48 volt hybrid system. Now that hybrid system does not actually drive on its own in electric, but it does assist the powertrain and whenever you stop at your stoplights. That combined system produces 247 horsepower and 258 foot-pounds of torque. The so Volvo chose to pair this with an eight-speed automatic transmission. Now, that's gonna give that about a zero to 60 time of 7.1 seconds. Not great, but it's actually not too bad either. How many station wagons do you know that go zero to 60 in 7.1 seconds? Now the other thing is, is that because this hybrid system doesn't actually drive electric on its own, your gas mileage is going to be 23 in the city, 30 on the highway, with an average of about 26. If you want to know the real world mile per gallon on this V60 cross country, then you're going to want to click subscribe and hit the like button because we're going to have the real world mile per gallon test coming out shortly. So this one is optioned with the power lift tailgate. So you do have a cover if you choose to use it, but you can actually pull that out. You can slide it up a little bit higher if you need some more room, or you can pull it out, drop it down, and it slides all the way back. One other thing that you can do with this is you can actually take it out. There's two little clips up here, and you're gonna pop that one, and then you're gonna pop that one there. And this whole piece just comes out so you can get more room inside there. All right, so with that piece out of the way, it actually gives you 22.9 cubic feet in here. It's pretty decent size. But what do we get if we drop the second row? So to drop the second row, you're gonna push here. That drops those. And then you can just push it on down. And now with those seats down, you got about 60 cubic feet of space back here. I think my wife would probably be able to take a nap back here. So this is equipped with the Ultimate Package. Now there's a whole lot of stuff in that Ultimate Package and I believe it's about a $5,300 increase over just the base model cross country. Now with that package, I'm just gonna highlight a couple things because you guys, I, you wanna sit here and listen to me list everything. I will list it all on the screen for you so you can see that, but I'm, things I'm gonna talk about is you add ventilated and heated seats which is fabulous for the winter and for the summer. You also get a heads up display. And let me tell you, this heads up display is very bright, very vibrant. Then you also get the pilot assist, which is your lane keep assist, your lane centering, and your adaptive cruise control. So hopefully this package and these, all these items on this list over here maybe entice you to go up to the ultimate, I think it's worth it. You'll have to let me know what you guys think about that down in the comments. Okay, so let's check out this inside. 
There you can see the door panel looks beautiful. See, you can see the speaker down in there. There's Bowers and Wilkins speakers. It's awesome that they just put that grill across there. You can still see the speakers. I love that. That is just awesome. Pan through here. You can see how beautiful the seats are. I love this color. It's really nice. The only thing I would worry about is your blue jeans rubbing off on it. You do have powered seats. You do have lumbar. So this does have a thigh support that extends. And it extends <laughs> quite a ways out. That is crazy. Wow, that's awesome. That's a pretty cool function. That make you feel really comfortable. And these seats are extremely comfortable. I like the vents. I like how this is vertical and you just have a switch to turn it on and off. They're awesome. Look around in here. You can see here's the gear shifter. It is pretty nice. You can see it's an actual crystal in there. Now, the cool thing about this is this is just push forward to go into reverse, pull backwards, go into drive. You have your park button right there. The other thing that is pretty cool is if you get out and you forget to put it in park and you turn the engine off, then it will automatically put it into park and shut, the, shut it off. The other thing is, if you're just sitting in your car with it running and you open your door to get out, it will shut itself off. That's a pretty cool feature. Now we'll get in, take a little closer look at this. Now though, here's your infotainment center. And I like the way that this is set up. It's not something that's huge and overpowering. You have these nice looking vents on each side, really stylish, really beautiful. This is run on the Android automotive system. So you do have Google Maps, which is excellent. So you don't have to worry about hooking up your Android phone so that you can get your Google Maps on here. You also have your climate control across the bottom and it's really simple to use. You can touch it like that. It will open all of this up. You have different settings for your automatic. You have different fan speeds for automatic. Temperature adjustment is right here, which is pretty easy. Here are your seats. You have three different levels of ventilation, three different levels of heating, and three different levels of your steering wheel. Now, one thing that my wife noticed, if you turn this on high, for some reason, you can turn your heat on high also. So not sure if that does anything or if it's supposed to do that but it's a nice little feature that is useless. All right, so now you have your camera set up and you do have 360 degree cameras, I believe. Oh, so here is your 360 degree camera. That is pretty cool. I don't know if you can move it around. It doesn't look like you can move it around any. Um, you do have all parking sensors and things like that. So that's pretty cool. All right, and then Inside of your settings, you have driving dynamics so you can set up your pilot assist. So it's got steering assist on. I don't like the steering assist. I'm gonna shut it off for right now. Here's where your Bowers and Wilkins stereo system is. So you have stage, studio, and you can set it for driver or rear. And then your room, you can set for a jazz club or a concert hall. That is pretty awesome. That's the first car that I've ever seen that in. Pretty cool. So this is your stereo controls. If you have your Wi-Fi hooked up and you're playing Pandora, you can pause and play your song. This is the volume here. And then you can also skip to the next song or go back. There's your windshield defroster, your rear defroster, and also your hazard buttons right there. Moving over this to the steering wheel, it's actually pretty easy to figure out. You've got cruise control here, and this is your speed up and down. Now, what is awkward? What is different about this is that when you press it once, it goes up by five miles per hour. If you press it and hold it down, it goes up by ones. Same thing on the volume, or same thing on the bottom side. I don't understand why it's different, why it's so backwards, but that's the way they have it set up, and it, it doesn't take too long to get used to. Uh, we've got all of your lighting controls right here, including automatic uh, brights, which is pretty cool. And then you have all your wiper buttons right there. 
in your door, there's your mirrors and your window buttons. Let's see what else? Center console. So let's take a look at this center console. Now this actually slides back to reveal two cup holders, which we have the keys sitting in there. So you have two cup holders, and then up here, if you can slide this up, and you have a small little change drawer, is what I'm going to call that. So that is pretty nice. Just a small little thing out of the way. You won't even notice it. You can close that up, and it just looks beautiful, just like that. All right, so now inside here, not a whole lot of storage, but a decent amount. I mean, I can put my whole hand down in here, so it's a good amount of space. And there's the other door panel. Again, you can see that Bowers and Wilkins speaker in there, and I didn't show you this one right on your dash. That's pretty cool. You don't see that often. And let's see, you can see the heads-up display. That's pretty cool. Let me see if I can get you a better view of that heads-up display. If I can get it in line here. There you go. So there is your heads-up display. That is pretty cool. Puts your map and everything. The other thing that's nice is your driver's display also has your map in the middle of it. So you can see it at all times. You don't have to look over here to see your map. So that's cool. And you don't even have to have this on your map. The seats are still down from earlier, so you can see how much space there is back here. A lot of space. You do have a panoramic roof, and it does have a shade, which is pretty nice. And you can stop that wherever you want to. You just touch it, and if you want to make it go all the way back again, you just swipe, and it goes all the way back. And then you do have it does open. Your roof does open, so that's pretty cool. And you can close it. Okay, so that's everything in the front. I think this is awesome. It is very luxurious in here. I was really surprised at how nice it really was in here. To me, I put this right up there with BMW and Mercedes. I think this is just as nice, probably not quite as expensive. But let's go check out the back and see how much room we have. You can see how beautiful this interior is now. You can see how much space there is back here. The driver's seat is set in my driving position. So we'll get in here and go from this side. And you can see how much space that I actually have. I'm about six foot. So I've got two fingers width. I don't know, an inch and a half, maybe two inches. So that is plenty of room there. Roof line got about an inch or so. So that's plenty of space there above my head. And if I move over a little bit, I've got even more room. So that works out pretty well. You have rear heated seats. That was actually a winter package add-on for this car, but you've got vents there. And then you also have two USB-C plugs back here. Center part comes down and you push right here and cup holders pop out. So that's pretty nice. You can actually see I've got that cover over the back there. It's pretty nice. Covers everything so nobody can see what's going on, on the inside. Here's another view of the front from the rear. You can just see how nice this interior is how beautiful it is. So impressive. All right, so let's go over some numbers and then let's take this out for a drive. The 2023 V60 Cross Country Ultimate starts out at $54,100. Now, our tester here has had a few other options added to it, including these awesome 20 inch wheels and the Bowers and Wilkins stereo system. And it is phenomenal. You can set it up as a stage presentation, as an orchestra presentation, and you can also do an in-studio sound. It's actually pretty awesome. Now, those two things, those wheels in that system are $3,200 
each. So that's two things they added on to that package. There's a few other things that they added also, which brings our tester here, the total price on it at $63,585. And that includes all options and destination fees. What do you think about this wagon? Let us know down in the comments, would you enjoy driving this wagon? I know I have for this last week, it's been awesome. You don't feel like you're driving a wagon. You actually just feel like you're driving actually like a crossover. It feels great. It's got plenty of power. So then we've seen all of everything else. We've seen all the numbers and everything. So let's go take this for a drive and see how it handles. So we've been driving this for about four days now. And when we talk about power and this having only 246 horsepower, I believe it was, does it have enough? Yes, it has enough. It has plenty of power for what it needs and the torque. Because it has that turbo on it, it gives you a little more torque than normal. So we are going to pull up here. We'll do a quick zero to 60. No one is coming. We'll pull out here. Do a quick stop. We're going to brake torque. We go. Sixty. You know, it does have a decent amount of pickup. Now, the zero sixty is only like seven point one seconds, but it does put you back in your seat when you first take off, which is pretty awesome. And that's what we all want to feel. <laughs> we all want that feeling. And so I don't have any problems with the power. I don't have any problems with the acceleration. If I want to accelerate, I can put the full, put it down and it will push you in the back of your seat and you accelerate very quickly. So it is tuned very well. If you need a little bit more, then you have to go down to the regular V60, not the cross country, and then you can get a Polestar tuned engine, which then you get around 350 horsepower, I believe. Miles per gallon on this is supposed to average 26. We are averaging right around 27, uh, well, um, until I just you know launched it. Uh, that took it down just a little bit, but basically we're averaging right around 27, um, and that is good. Um, that is sufficient. It works well. Um, the one thing I talked about when I was going over the inside, um, the cruise control is a little awkward. Um, so you push it once and it goes up five miles per hour you, and down the same way. But if you hold it, then it goes up by ones. A little backwards, but something you can get used to. The ride comfort in here is excellent. The suspension is very, very well tuned. Uh, you don't have any like real harsh bumps. They are absorbed very well. Um, it's the, and even your big, big bumps where some other vehicles might be a little bouncy. This one just sucks it up. It just sticks the road and drives perfectly. I really do feel comfortable in this car. I actually feel really, really safe in this car. And that is one thing that Volvo has always been a top priority for them is safety. So the driver safety features on this are amazing. The lane centering, the lane keep assist and the adaptive cruise all work great. Um, the lane centering at times it can be um, a little wishy-washy, not sure um, where it wants the line to be versus where I want it to be. So one of those things that if you ride a little to one side or the other, it wants to pull you back to the other way. Then there's other times where it seems like it's wanting to ride more closer to the center line than the outside line. I don't know if um, that is just something that it's sensing on the outside and it's wanting to move over a little bit, but um, it's not a huge thing. And if you're like me and you like to actually drive your car yourself, you just shut that off. You don't have to worry about it. You drive however you want to. Cornering in this is excellent it really doesn't have a whole lot of body roll i really thought that there would be a little bit more but it really doesn't i mean it's a side to side shift there is not any body roll it is really impressive 
let's talk about these seats. How good are these seats? <laughs> if you've ever been in a Volvo, especially an ultimate trim Volvo, you know how good these seats are. At first, when I first sat down in them, I was like, okay, this is not, there's something just about these that I don't feel right. Um, but the longer that I've driven it and I made a few adjustments to it, and now I just feel super comfortable. I feel great in here. I just feel like I could just drive forever right now. The cool thing about these seats is not only are they powered in like up and down and back and forth and the list lays back and all that stuff, you actually have thigh support that is adjustable, which you saw in my video earlier. But the one thing that I didn't show you was that you can actually adjust the bolstering on your sides. So if you are a smaller person, you can bring the sides of those seats and you can clamp them in tighter on you. If you like to have it a little bit tighter, you like to feel that hug around you to keep your body steady, you can move those in and adjust those. That is cool. If you are a little bit larger person and you need a little bit more room and you don't like it pushing on your sides, you can loosen that up and make them go out farther. So this, these can be adjusted and adapted for just about any driver. It's actually pretty cool. The layout in here is excellent. So this is easy to get to. I like that it's not a giant, huge pad and the vents are really nice right here. You got a lot of airflow coming through. I like the way the material in the dash is. This is all soft. You've got a Bowers and Wilkins speaker up front there. You got the speakers in the doors with mesh grill. You can actually see the speakers. I love that. The steering wheel is set up very easy to understand. It was very easy to find the cruise control and how to use it, the lights your wipers, all of that stuff was very, very easy to get used to. Now, the driver's display, I actually really do like it. It's very simple. You can either have your map on or you have nothing on. <laughs> your speedometer is on the left side and your tachometer is on the right side. That is a little awkward. My wife was not liking that very much, um, so <laughs> she just looked, decided to look at the heads-up display, which is very bright, uh, easy to see, and that way she could see her speed because it was really hard to adapt to looking to the left to see the speedometer. Um, I still, you know, I notice it's there, I know it's there, uh, so I try to, you know, use it. Um, but I like having the map on the middle of the driver's display. I do not have to look over here to look at my map. I can look straight ahead or I can look in my heads up display because it has the map directions on it also. Pretty awesome. This is the uh, Android Automotive and it functions very well. There is a lot of things that you can do here. You, this has Apple CarPlay app already added into this system, but you can add the Android Auto if you would need to. But you really don't because you have Google Maps. And that's what most people use Android Automotive for. You also have your Wi-Fi connection. So you have Pandora that you can pull up and use. And if you go to the media, you can actually, it will pull it up and it will show you what you're listening to. So it works the same way. You don't, just don't have to connect through Android Auto. It's pretty awesome. The stereo controls down here are very easy, very simple. You got a basically a play and a pause, a skip track and a volume. Very simple. That's all you need. And the little crystal shifter gear selector is actually kind of nice. I like it. I think it's, um, you know, bougie. I don't know if that's the right word, bougie, but I like it. I think it looks nice, classy. Bougie's not a good word, we'll use classy. The engine start stop switch was actually pretty interesting. Um, I got in at first and I was looking for the button and my wife was waiting to see if I could figure it out and then I found it and you actually turn it to the right to start the engine. So you don't have a button per se, you actually have a knob that you turn to turn it on and off. 
So that was um, a little bit different than I've seen before. All right. So to so having driven this now um, off and on for three or four days, my wife and I share the cars when they come in so that she can get a feel for them so we can do our family review for you guys. So make sure if you want to see that family review, you subscribe and hit the like button on this one so everybody else can see it also. The family review though, she gives her thoughts about the car and how she feels about it. And it's kind of different feeling and getting that woman's perspective. So um, it's very interesting. Now, the little time that I have driven this, I like it a lot. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about driving a wagon. Um, and I'm not really sure why we call them station wagons, but um, I'm just going to call it a wagon because station wagon just sounds like a cheap, cheap word. And this is not a cheap, cheap car. This is a very elegant, nice fancy classy bougie car and i love it awesome i but i really just didn't feel that i'm driving a wagon even looking in the rearview mirror i see the second row seats back there and i see the rear glass back there but it doesn't seem like it's that far away it actually just feels like i'm in a shorter crossover when you're driving and the way this handles and drives you just feel like you're in a smaller car than what you actually are it's it i don't know what else to say about it it's just a great great vehicle i really haven't found found any real downfalls um to it like i said the only thing was was about the the driver assistance part of it, the lane centering was a little iffy and I had to fight with it a little bit, um, but that's just a preference and I can shut it off. I don't have to have that. Um, the panoramic glass is great. Um, the sunshade is good. It's quick. Um, it randomly shuts itself. I don't know if it's when I lock the car, it automatically shuts it or what the situation is, but I know I have it open and I don't shut it, but when I get in, then it's shut. That's all I can tell you. So I don't know how it works, how it shuts itself, but it, d it does decide to shut itself. But otherwise, if you were considering a Volvo wagon again, and you were thinking about this V60, um, I would consider this cross country because it is a little bit higher. And if you do want to not like do some serious off-roading, but you can do a little bit of light off-roading, um, maybe just take a few trails to get some scenery and stuff, take the kids out and show them, show them some uh, scenery that they don't normally get to see without having to have an SUV or something. This is perfect. I say if you're in that $60,000 range, get this get it in the ultimate you're gonna love it you're gonna love the way it's set up you're gonna love the way it looks you're gonna love the way that it sounds so as nike says you know just do it just get it you'll love it you won't regret it all right i will see you in the next one